This rabbit hole outlines myths, urban legends, and conspiracy theories from all over the internet. These topics range from the very well-known topics at the top of the rabbit hole to the strange and confusing topics at the bottom of the rabbit hole. In today's video, I will explain everything in this conspiracy theory rabbit hole. With that being said, slap on that VPN and grab your Snuggie for comfort because this is the entire internet rabbit hole. There are going to be six layers in this rabbit hole and each layer has a bunch of topics. I will explain each topic which has their own respective backstories, really good theories, or a huge supportive community. We're going to start at the top Top, which is the dirt layer and dig past all the materials until we hit the bottom layer. So without any further hesitation, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get this video started. DEFCON 5. The first topic that we're going to talk about on DEFCON 5 is this is America. One of the more subtle visual cues is that the Confederate style trousers are visible in nearly every scene in the music video for this is America. Confederate soldiers fought endlessly to hold enslaved people from being freed, ultimately losing to the Union forces in 1865. Perhaps the trousers are a nod to this period, a subtle constant reminder of America's complicated relationship with Confederate monuments and the remnants of slavery. Amid the chaos behind Childish Gambino and the kids, the viewer's attention is constantly drawn to the forefront of the shot, where the youngsters perform trendy dance moves. This moment can be taken as a commentary to modern internet culture, which often allows viral TikTok dances and other distractions to redirect our focus from the actual important issues. In the music video, we see cars burning, bodies being thrown around and dragged away, and symbolism of an upcoming apocalypse yet our focus is forcibly pulled back to the dance moves at the forefront. In the scenes with the red cloth, we can see them carefully handling all the weapons to symbolize how the Southern American states protect all their gun laws. Even after causing so much devastation, the weapons are always gently and carefully set inside the red cloth for safekeeping. Within the music video, all the mayhem the guns have actually caused is never actually acknowledged in the music video, which is kind of concerning. But the next thing we're going to be talking about is Mad Honey. Often red and not yellow and referred to as Mad Honey, this stuff looks a lot different and is much more bitter than regular honey. But weirdest of all, it's a strong hallucinogen. That's right, hallucinogenic honey actually exists. But should you try it? Mad honey is known to cause extreme nausea and dizziness, but because of its unique look and its unique taste, plus its rarity, it's highly unlikely that you'll ever eat some by mistake, so that's a good thing. The next thing I want to talk about is Nostradamus. Nostradamus was a French astrologer and a physician from the 1500s most known for his book about prophecies which is a collection of over 900 predictions that are allegedly predicting future events. I just wanted to mention that all of the predictions from Nostradamus have not ended yet and they're said to end around the year 3800 or 3798. Even though it's extremely frightening to know the predictions that he said, one can't deny that understanding this is something that we should all care about. Some of the predictions for this decade that we're in right now include meteor strikes, inflation, artificial intelligence taking over, a rise in food shortages, and the death detonation of nuclear bombs. I really recommend taking a look into Nostradamus predictions because they're absolutely frightening and to be honest some of them have actually came true already. LSD Dream Simulator. LSD Dream Simulator is an exploration game developed and published by Asmic Ace Entertainment for the PlayStation. In LSD Dream Simulator the player explores surreal environments without any actual objective. The player can only move and touch objects that'll only warp them to another setting. The game's concept is actually based on a dream diary kept by an Asmic Ace employee for over a decade. The game received a limited release in Japan on October 22nd, 1998, alongside a soundtrack and a book composed of excerpts from the Dream Diary. LSD Dream Simulator quickly fell into obscurity. However, it has experienced a resurgence in popularity in its recent years due to the weirdness. Like, you know, we like really weird stuff in the internet in 2022. Critics have actually praised its whimsical qualities, with it being cited as one of the most experimental video games of all time. The next thing I want to talk to you guys, you probably heard of it, you probably heard it somewhere but GMOs. A GMO or a genetically modified organism is a plant, an animal, or a microbe whose DNA has been altered using one of various genetic engineering techniques. For centuries, humans have used many different breeding techniques to modify organisms. Cattle, corn, and even dogs have been selectively bred over generations to have certain desired traits. In addition, most meats and dairy products are actually animals that are raised with genetically modified feed. Unfortunately, many people believe that GMOs GMOs are bad for the organic food industry and rip off consumers by preying on their fear and ignorance. However, it's been widely accepted that genetically modified food and regular food are just as safe as each other. Also, as others point out, virtually all the food that we have available to eat on Earth has been genetically modified by centuries of selective breeding. The next thing I want to talk to you about, and I can't believe it's on this list, but Flat Earth. The Flat Earth model is an archaic and scientifically disproven conception of Earth's shape as a plane or disk. Physicists will 
find it shocking, but there are plenty of people worldwide that genuinely believe that the Earth is actually flat. The idea that the Earth is actually spherical was settled all the way back to the ancient Greek philosophers. In the 3rd century BC, Eratosthenes became the first person to estimate the circumference of the Earth with all of his calculations. And don't forget about the images from space if that's not enough proof for the flat earthers, but anyways, some people online will use the example of the boat and the horizon to back up their claims despite the numerous debunkings. The next thing I want to talk to you guys is about the law of attraction. The law of attraction is a universal principle that states whatever you give your energy and your concentration to is exactly what will arrive right back at you. So when you focus on the abundance of good things in your life, you will automatically attract more positive things into your life. In the New Thought spiritual movement, the law of attraction is rapidly growing as a pseudoscience based on the concept that positive or negative thoughts bring positive or negative experiences into a person's life. Some people also believe that manifestation is the whimsical belief that if you want something like money, success, a relationship, a recording contract, you name it, you don't really need to actually do anything. You just sit at home thinking about it and whatever you want will magically appear. And that's like I said, the whimsical belief of manifestation or the law of attraction. But there are actually some people that really believe in it, you know? So the next thing I want to talk to you about is Rick Rolling. Rick Rolling is an internet meme involving a bait and switch that's typically disguised using a link leading to the infamous music video for the 1987 song Never Gonna Give You Up performed by Rick Astley. For example, people would tell their friends that Walmart would have the PlayStation 5 in stock and then they would send them a link to check it out and when the friend clicks on the link, it'll immediately open up Never Gonna Give You Up and the infamous drum roll would start playing. Overall, Astley is not bothered by the sensation stating that he finds it absolutely hilarious or he found it absolutely hilarious. His only concern was that his daughter doesn't get embarrassed about it. But an agent for Astley's record label released a comment that showed Astley's interest in the phenomenon had recently faded. Anyways, the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is data leaks. Data leaks are everywhere. Facebook and Instagram passwords, important health information, private photos of everyday people, and many more leaks that you can actually find on online black markets. Usually when there's a massive data leak, the attackers obtain crucial private information from users and notify whoever they attack about the cyber attack. Then the hackers would ask for large sums of money to return the data without publishing any of it. Typically they just publish it anyways, but if the victims don't comply by paying, the hackers would go to step two, which would be to publish all of the leaked data onto black markets for all of the people willing to pay to see what the leaked data actually was. This happened, for example, to the Irish government. Go take a look into that story. Ah, the next thing I want to talk about is 69 and 420. I mean, I can't believe that this is on the list, but the numbers 69 and 420 have become notorious numbers for users on the internet. The numbers refer to and weed. 69 refers to a position where two people simultaneously give each other 420 refers to April 20th, which is considered an occasion for celebrating the smoking of marijuana. You'll typically see these numbers beside various usernames on various online platforms. But here's a fun fact. The first ever rough draft of the name of my channel before I called it Crypto NWO was Crypto New World Order. 420. Sadly, they didn't let me use it. The next thing I want to talk about is full stop search term. If you were to go on the YouTube search bar right now and type in a full stop period, you would be shocked by what you would see. There are actual videos of terrorism, murder, fatal car crashes, and other unimaginable stuff. The reason behind this is still unknown till this very date and curious users from all over the world every single day lose their innocence after searching for a full stop punctuation on YouTube. I seriously don't recommend doing this because this could be just like a simple measure to get people onto a government watch list by seeing who would engage with these videos and who wouldn't. I don't know. Don't search up a full stop punctuation on YouTube. The next thing I want to talk to you about is missing letters from the alphabet, the English alphabet to be more specific. We used to have more letters in the English alphabet. Along old school New England streets, you'll probably see a sign saying ye old tavern or ye old soda shop, but there's a bit of history that you should probably know. Phrases like ye old are just some of the late 19th century's first marketing ploys that invoke a sentimental connection to the older times. But before our modern alphabet was established, the language used many more characters we've since removed from our infamous 26 letter lineup. F Thorn, Wynn, Yog, Ash, and Ethel are the six most recently removed from the English alphabet. And the last one for DEFCON 5, we're going to be talking about the OnlyFans theory. OnlyFans is the go-to app for people trying to make it in the adult film industry. The first time that I heard about the app was within the context of a girl selling explicit photos and videos of herself for a subscription price on the app. So they end up taking all their clothes off and they play with themselves online thinking that people have never heard of the classic free PH. But the theory is that the OnlyFans community seems to be normalizing the act 
of being an OnlyFans model. Many people think that convincing someone to make an OnlyFans account is demoralizing, while there's a lot of other people that believe it's empowering. My opinion on the matter is that if women or even men want to make an account, let them. It's their freaking body. Like, let them make an account if they really want to, you know? Now that's all with DEFCON number five. Let's go ahead and see what's on DEFCON number four. The first topic that we're gonna talk about on DEFCON 4 is Godzilla by Eminem. Now, Godzilla is a song by American rapper Eminem featuring Juice World. It was released on January 28th, 2020. The song was Juice World's first post-mortem song following his death in December 2019. Eminem's third verse on the song Godzilla actually holds the world record for the fastest rap verse ever, rapping at 10.65 syllables per second or 300 words in 30 seconds. However, the song or the current speed record isn't exactly why the song made it onto the list. The song made it onto the list because of the release date and because of what happened within the music video. If you take a closer look at the music video, you'll see Marshall walking through a grocery store and the shelves are going kind of empty and he's vomiting up a bunch of Legos, pointing at a calendar and whatnot. But a few days after the video was released, the pandemic was officially announced. The shelves at grocery stores actually started taking a massive hit. You guys remember this, you guys know this, the toilet paper. There were also some remarks about aliens within the music video in that scene before he gets punched by Mike Tyson. So what may Eminem or his team might know about the upcoming future that we don't know? What else do you think is a hidden message within the music video for Godzilla by Eminem? The next topic I want to talk to you about is GGG QEP. Now, GGG QEP, and stay with me, but it stands for Gadolinium Gallium Garnet Quantum Electronic Processor. The GGG part is a very particular type of metal. This synthetic metal has been determined to be the perfect candidate for storing large amounts of data. It has a crystalline structure, which means it is composed of a cubic lattice on a microscopic scale. In addition, it also has a similar hardness to topaz. A five centimeter cube of the material would be roughly one mole. However, the structure is so complicated that one mole of it, or a five centimeter cube, can hold 8,153 exabytes. Now, you probably never heard of an exabyte because an exabyte is one billion gigabytes. To put that into perspective, the entire internet with everything you know and love and everything that exists on it is about 700 exabytes. Now remember, a cube of this size could hold 8,153 exabytes, or in other words, about 11 internets. Quantum electronic processors would be able to process information instantly when used on a computer. It's actually as instant as the electrons can come through the machine and give us a value. You would have a computer that can contain all of the information put online that's ever been put online and get any of it instantly. However, today, it's only a theory behind the idea of a truly perfect computer. The next topic I want to talk to you about is about chemtrails. The chemtrail conspiracy theory believers believe that long-lasting condensation trails are chemtrails consisting of chemical or biological agents left in the sky by high-flying aircraft. People believe that whatever is sprayed into the air is sprayed for nefarious purposes, and the entire reason why it's sprayed into the air is undisclosed to the general public. Now, believers say that while normal contrails dissipate relatively quickly, the chemtrails that linger must contain additional substances. Now, those who subscribe to the theory speculate that the chemtrail release may be for changing the weather, mind control, population control, chemical warfare, or testing of biological chemical agents on a population. In addition, the believers say that chemtrails cause respiratory illnesses and other health problems. But here's the thing, if people saw actual proof of the governments risking the lives of their own people, that they would be quick to expose and stop any such activities. Now, the next thing I want to talk to you about is rule number 34. Rule number 34 is one of the main internet rules that states if something exists, then there must be a about it. The concept is commonly illustrated through fan art and fan fictions in which fictional TV and cartoon characters engage in sexual behavior similar to the Rune Childhood meme. But if you were to go onto Google Images right now and type in any popular character's name beside the term rule number 34, then you would come across dozens of fan illustrations of those characters doing something pretty damn nefarious. Now, for example, one of the shows that I constantly watch is Friends. Well, I searched for rule number 34, Joey Tribbiani, and I was pretty shocked, but like not so shocked to find that there was actual fan drawn images of Joey doing some pretty wacky things with the other characters. Now, I know that many of you are extremely curious people, but this is one of those things that I don't want you looking into because you can ruin your entire childhood. You can ruin your innocence by just searching up anything with rule number 34 beside it. The next topic that I wanted to mention is about spider yeah, you heard that correctly. Spider p it is a thing. Now this one really drove me crazy because I have serious arachnophobia. It's no secret if you watch my videos that I am seriously scared of spiders. When you think you've seen everything on the internet, along comes p featuring humans having sex with giant spiders. Yes, spider p After watching more than what I expected to see in a lifetime, strictly for research intents rather than pleasure, by the way, I just wanted to note that, but I still don't even know how this could have ever happened. Now there's a few living creatures out there that inspire more horror and disgust than the spider.
spider. And for good reason, those things are actual freaks of nature. Now there's an infamous video on the pH of some guy flipping out about spiders and claiming that he's bigger than them. The camera then shows the lady spider, then shows her looking at the guy, and she starts chasing him, he screams, she gives him sloppy toppy, they f the end. Don't look up spider p your life will be absolutely ruined, bro. <laughs> the next thing I want to talk to you about is the Cannibal Cafe. Now, the Cannibal Cafe is a perished online forum for people with a cannibalism fetish. On this website, there were tons of forums of people talking about how to prepare human victims for the consumption of other humans. Now, I'm not gonna get into much detail about the website itself. However, I'm gonna be taking a look at one terrifying individual who was an active user of the Cannibal Cafe. Armin Maiwis was a German computer repair technician. He achieved international attention for killing and eating a voluntary victim in two 2001. Which, by the way, he found this person on the internet. He found him on the Cannibal Cafe. After he and the victim voluntarily attempted to eat the victim severed, he killed his victim and then ate large amounts of his flesh. Looking for a willing volunteer, Mai was posted an advertisement on the then active website, the Cannibal Cafe. It's very important, but like not so important to note that Mai was did not want to force anybody to do anything against their will. But then he met with Bern Jurgen Armando Brandes from the same website. The two made a very long videotape when they met on March 9th, 2001 showing Maiwis amputating Brandeis' schlonga, and then the two men attempting to eat it together. Maiwis then ran Brandeis a bath before going to read a Star Trek book while checking on him every 15 minutes or so. After long hesitation and prayer, Maiwis killed Brandeis and hung his body on a meat hook. The incident was actually recorded on a four hour videotape. Maiwis dismembered and ate the corpse over the next 10 months, storing body parts in his freezer under pizza boxes, and he ate up to 20 kilograms of the guy's flesh. The next thing I want to talk to you about is about 3 a.m. In Western Christian tradition, the hour between 3 and 4 a.m. is considered a period of peak supernatural activity. This time also refers to the devil's hour because it is mocking an inversion of the time in which Jesus supposedly died, which was at 3 p.m. by the way. Well, for all the spooky stories surrounding 3 a.m., the truth is there's nothing really that special about it. Like nothing really happens at 3 a.m. if you stay up at 3 a.m. The 3 a.m. challenge was created by Jason Ether or Ether. Sorry, I don't know your last name, bro, but you know him as J Station. He uploaded childish 3am videos seeking paranormal activity with these creatures or cartoon characters. <laughs> Since JStation, other videos like this have popped up all over YouTube, spreading the superstition that scary things can happen at 3am. While superstitions like this go all the way back to at least the late 1500s surrounding the witching hour, which is the time of the night where witches, ghosts, demons, and ghouls are at their most powerful. So is 3am really unlucky or dangerous? Let me know what you think about this specific time in the comment section. The next thing I want to talk to you about is the Brazilian spawn. SpongeBob incident. The SpongeBob defecation Brazilian broadcast was a supposed incident during the mid 2010s in Brazil. This strange conspiracy claims that there is a lost episode of SpongeBob that has only played once only in Brazil, and in the episode, Squidward starts playing his clarinet and accidentally plays what is known as the brown note. The brown note is supposedly a rumored pitch that causes the listeners to completely lose control of their bowels when played. Now, this supposed noise during this episode caused over 200 plus children to poop their pants and not just poop their pants, but release up to half their body weight through their bowels just from this one episode alone. The children that were tragically affected by this episode were reportedly rushed to the hospital. It was actually figured out from the internet that the broadcast aired in early summer just before Brazil hosted the 2016 Olympics. And at the time of the Rio Olympics, there was worry about the water pollution in the area, and many officials spoke about the water causing the children to get sick, or because of that brown note from Squidward playing the clarinet. I don't know, this sounds absolutely bizarre. Check it out. The last topic I wanted to talk to you about in DEFCON for is about fake news. It's no surprise that many people don't trust the media. It's almost like if somebody saw something on any news outlet, it's immediately a lie to them. Well, this theory dates as far back as the first news broadcast that ever happened. On US election day, November 2nd, 1920, the radio station KDKA became the first licensed commercial radio station to produce a news program. Well, since then, people have been extremely skeptical about what they would hear from these news outlets. Now, fake news became a much, much bigger problem after the US election in 2016 when the new president at the time, Donald Trump, started discrediting any news outlet speaking against him as president. Now, fake news is definitely a terrifying and a widespread issue in the news industry and it's become a global problem. The most recent example of fake news is during the COVID-19 pandemic where almost 80% of American and Canadians reported to seeing some kind of fake news during the outbreak. Now, the good news is that the public's confidence in recognizing fake news is thankfully on the increase. This increase in recognizing fake news is really, really good, really significant because like fake or 
inaccurate stories can quickly gain traction and sometimes distort audiences' understandings of subjects ranging from public health and presidential elections all the way to the initiation of a global war. Now that's all with DEF CON number four. Let's move down and see what's on DEF CON number three. The first topic that we're going to talk about on DEF CON three is Sicko Mode. Now Sicko Mode is a song made by American rapper Travis Scott and it features a verse from Canadian rapper Drake. In the fast-paced music video, there are many hidden messages hidden throughout. The one example that I wanted to talk about is the segment in the music video where Drake appears to be traveling through space like a meteor and he appears to crash into some guy. It all happens very very quickly but if you were to slow everything down and know your history this segment could be a lot darker than we actually thought. It is widely believed online that the boy Drake crashes into resembles a former American rapper known as XXXTentacion who passed away after being murdered in his hometown in Florida. Before XXXTentacion got murdered he relentlessly publicly called out Drake for stealing the flow to his most popular song, Look At Me. Now if you listen to the song, you'll notice that Drake uses the same cadence and the same flow in his song KMT. And he does this without getting X's permission or giving him any credit for stealing the cadence and flow. X also left various past examples of Drake stealing other people's work without giving them the proper credit either. I mean, I believe it was all in good banter, like it was even helping the career of growing artist XXXTentacion. However, it started to like really get out of hand when X started bringing Drake's mother into this and like doubling down on his hatred for Drake. It got to a point where like X posted a picture on Twitter of a guy that looks like Drake giving sloppy toppy to another guy with what appears to be all over his face. X even posted on his Instagram story and this is where it gets kind of weird but he posted that if he were to ever be murdered, ever be killed in a sacrifice, Drake would be the one behind it. Honestly, I was following all of this in real time and I was a huge X fan before he passed away and I'm even a fan until now. You may be watching it and you may be thinking that the segment in the music video may be paying homage to the dirty deeds that Drake did, publicly flaunting that he was the one to rid the world of XXXTentacion. Now, it is alleged, but I think way too much crap adds up and I thought Drake was the biggest slime bag after putting my own puzzle pieces together. But like I said, it's purely just a theory, you know? Like, what do you think happened? Do you think Drake pulled the strings to lead to the murder of XXXTentacion? Or do you think this is a simple case of jealousy for those who couldn't make it out of the hood? I also want to note that this is just one hidden message hidden throughout the Sicko Mode music video. I'm not gonna be covering all of them in this video because there's way too many of them, but the next topic we're gonna be talking about is bots rule the internet. Many individuals online believe that at least 90 to 90 percent of every created user is a spam bot or a spyware bot. Now go on to any popular YouTube video's comment section and I will guarantee you that you will find spam bots telling you to follow them on Telegram. Spam bots have been an ongoing problem for months and it happens almost to every YouTuber that gets even the smallest amount of attention. A spammer would typically disguise themselves as a video's creator and they would try to get unsuspecting people into following their Telegram for scammy nefarious purposes. I have been dealing with this problem for almost a year now and I have applied possibly every necessary filter to try to block them out. But still, I seriously think that YouTube needs to step in and eliminate them and make sure that it doesn't happen again because as time goes on, these guys are getting way and way more creative. Like now they're making their usernames, their YouTube usernames, the same exact username as their Telegram and they would tell people to contact their Telegram and you know, some people would think it's the actual creator. So these people would end up messaging these people on Telegram and God knows what happens to them. Typically they get scammed. Now my audience got a lot smarter because I've been telling them constantly, but unfortunately thousands of innocent individuals are getting scammed by these bots daily. If you were ever actually to see one of these bots in my comment section or any other creator's comment section, then please go ahead and press the three dots and quickly report them. The next thing I want to talk to you about is meat showers. The Great Kentucky Meat Shower was absolutely wild. For several minutes on March 3rd, 1876, the Kentucky Meat Shower was an incident transpiring between the early hours of 11 and 12 o'clock. It appeared to be chunks of red meat measuring approximately three by three inches and they were falling from the sky in an area in the settlement of the Olympia Springs in Bath County, Kentucky. Now people never really determined exactly what type of meat it is. However, various reports suggested that it was a bear, deer, lamb, beef, or some people even suggested that it was human. It is said that two unidentified men turned up to taste the meat and they judged it to be mutton. A bunch of samples from the meat were gathered and they were sent to chemists and universities across the country. A lot of the chemists theorized that the meat shower resulted from a flock of vultures simultaneously vomiting the meat. There is a sample that remains and the sample has been kept at Monroe Moonsick Medical and Science Museum in Transylvania University in Lexington, Kentucky. The next topic I want to talk to you about is what's underneath Denver Airport. Built in 1995 and as a replacement for the Stapleton Airport, Denver International Airport has always had its fair share of shady conspiracy theories. From the beginning, people have theorized about the airport's secret tunnels, clues to secret societies, and ominous messages of doom hidden in the public artwork around the Denver Airport area. Now whether you believe the rumors or not, here are four of the most popular conspiracies about what is underneath the Denver International Airport that people still like to indulge in until this very day. First off, a bunch
bunch of people believe that a giant blue horse sculpture resides there and it is a nod to the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Second, some people believe that it contains the Illuminati headquarters. Third, some believe the underground tunnels of the airport have nuclear bunkers. And finally, the most prominent theory is that there is a bunch of artwork providing clues about the end of the world. The next topic I want to talk to you about is Pyramid City. Now, Pyramid City could be referencing two things. First, it could be referencing the Mega City Pyramid, which is a proposed project to construct a massive self-sustaining pyramid over Tokyo Bay in Japan. The Pyramid City would have businesses, parks, and everything everyone would ever need. The structure would house a million people and it would be 2,004 meters high, including five stack trusses, each with the similar dimensions of the Great Pyramid of Giza. This pyramid would help answer Tokyo's increasing lack of space. Unfortunately, the proposed structure is so large that it could not be built with current conventional materials due to its weight. Instead, the design of the Great Pyramid City is heavily relying on the future availability of super strong lightweight materials. The plan to start construction of the Pyramid City starts in 2030 and is determined to be completed in the year 2110, making it the largest artificial structure in Earth's history. Now, Pyramid City could also be referencing an ambitious reimagination of the end of the life experience, part memorial and part art installation. They hope to create a meaningful destination where people can go to breathe, think, create, and reflect. The 2,500 pyramids will transport visitors to a timeless world with prehistoric geological formations, endless skies, and glittering geometric sculptures. In addition, each pyramid will be etched with the names chosen by the patrons, offering a unique way to honor a loved one. The Dancing Plague. In July 1518, a woman whose name was given as Frau Trophea stepped onto the street and began dancing. It seemed like she could not stop dancing and she kept on dancing until she collapsed from exhaustion. After resting a little bit, she actually got up and resumed the compulsive dancing and then she kept on dancing until her inevitable death. By the way, I just wanted to note that when it happened in 1518, it happened in what is known today as modern France, but between 50 and 400 people started dancing for days and ultimately kept dancing until their exhausting deaths. Some sources claim that the play killed around 15 people per day for nearly an entire month. Now I know this sounds absolutely insane, but according to what we all know, it seems like an actual thing that happened in history. The two main theories behind the dancing plague of 1518 are food poisoning or stress-induced mass hysteria. Like right now, if you go on Google and you type in the dancing plague of 1518, you will be given countless results regarding the event that actually happened. It actually freaking happened in history and it blows me the hell away. But the next thing I want to talk to you about is unsearchable YouTube videos. Now later into the video, I'll be talking about unlisted YouTube videos, but now I'm gonna be talking about unsearchable YouTube videos. Even though both of them fall under unsearchable, I'm not gonna be covering the unlisted YouTube videos in this segment. But the difference between the two is that unlisted videos are only visible to those with the official link to the video. But if the video is private, even with the link, it won't allow you to like see the video. So if I post a video and I put it on private, even if you have the link, you're not going to be able to watch the video. Now, I wanted to note that there's about 300 to 500 hours of content uploaded onto YouTube publicly every minute. So if you assume the same growth rate for the past 10 years and assume that no one would upload any more videos until you stop watching all the videos, then it would take you 60,000 years of nonstop watching to watch every single video on YouTube. You see, every creator has a bunch of guidelines that we have to follow, and unfortunately, no possible human can review and sort out all the content that's been uploaded onto YouTube. Hence, YouTube heavily relies on its sophisticated search and discovery system to deliver all of the good content to possible viewers who might enjoy the content. Now think of all the videos with titles in other languages or in special characters, and imagine all the videos on YouTube that don't have enough metadata to be found by someone in the search and discovery system. It's hard to imagine what kind of videos we probably won't ever see, whether they're funny, good, upsetting, something unsettling, or just throwaway videos, I don't know, but we're never gonna see them. The next topic I want to talk to you about is Antarctica. Antarctica is a southern continent and the site of the South Pole. It is a ice-covered, virtually uninhabited landmass. It's a very secluded part of the world, and it's rumored that only 11 children have been born on this continent. Now, other than the flat earth theory thinking that this is the edge of the planet, here are some other theories of it being the forbidden sector. No one really knows what happens in Antarctica. Anyone who's ever been to Antarctica never really came back. If you try to take a peek at the border, you'll be grabbed by the security penguins and be taken in. I don't really know. But some think there's actually a pole at the southern pole in Antarctica that'll take you to the north pole, you know, at the top of the world. And some people think that this forms the hollow earth theory. People think that this houses a bunch of creatures, aliens, and many people think it's a UFO base. And the ones wearing the tinfoil condoms believe that it's the land of the ancient race of super beings with big squared heads. But of course, the most common theory of Antarctica is for those that believe in the flat earth theory from earlier on in this video. The theory states that the earth is a disc and Antarctica is just a wall of ice that goes around the disc. I don't really know, but flat earthers 
flat earthers. The next topic I want to talk to you about is the real Thomas the Train Man. According to a description from the YouTube channel Wade Cohen, a human face on a train was just the beginning of this cruel experiment. As you watch this 35 second clip, you'll witness the agony of a train made entirely of freaking flesh. We see what it appears to be is the same openings that we have on our human bodies and those openings are on the train as well. And you know, like as the train is annoyingly chugging by, we see these openings farting and letting out a bunch of gases. Listen, the train is absolutely terrifying. I always thought Thomas the Train was terrifying, the one from the 90s. But after watching this video, I'd gladly make the 90s Thomas the Train my screensaver. I actually think there's far more behind this video within the 35 seconds that definitely needs to be looked into. The next topic I want to talk to you about is meme coins take over. Now, meme coins are cryptocurrencies that have massive online support. For example, Dogecoin. Dogecoin is a meme coin initially created as a joke. Now, as time went on, people actually wanted their share in this meme coin, so they actually started using their computers to mine this currency. Some people even took their own money and they invested it into Dogecoin and other meme coins. But after Bitcoin boomed multiple times, but most notably from 2020 to 2021, when it flew over $60,000, we started to see a lot of more meme coins appear. Now they got way, way, way more popular after this and many people worldwide were turning $100 into $100,000 overnight by picking some of the right meme coins. Like today, for example, some people actually think that Dogecoin will overtake Bitcoin because of its simplicity in recognizing the value in how many coins you have versus finding the value in like a fraction of a Bitcoin, like 0.0001 BTC. But now here's the crazy part. Dogecoin wants to be Bitcoin, right? Well, there's a new cryptocurrency, a new word cryptocurrency called the Dogecoin King killer and it's known as Shiba Inu. That coin is based on the beautiful infamous dog breed with the same name and its entire dedication in life is to beat Dogecoin and Dogecoin's dedication is to beat Bitcoin so in theory Shiba is going to be the biggest cryptocurrency ever. Anyways I know somebody that put $40 into Shiba Inu and they cashed out with $50,000 and the craziest part is that I gave him that $40 for his birthday. I want that $40 back. But the last topic I want to talk to you about in DEFCON number three is the Mad City Murder Confession. Now Mad City is a song created by American rapper Kendrick Lamar. We've all seen the album cover, a baby at a table with a 40 next to the baby bottle. We've heard the tale of his boys and how he witnessed them departure into darkness. He could have been them, but somehow he stayed away from the gangs and kept his head inside a notebook instead of rolling up some blunts. He left Compton as a survivor and told the world his infamous story. But what if Kendrick wasn't always so good? What if something traumatic happened to Kendrick that changed his life forever? Well, I want you guys to take a look at these lyrics that you see on the screen. Been feeling this way since I was 16 from Blacker the Berry. And remember that number 16, the age 16, Kendrick Lamar when he was 16 years old. And the most notable lyric from the song Mad City is, if I told you I killed a at 16, would you believe me or see me to be innocent Kendrick you've seen in the street? And like I said, that's from the song Mad City. And that little statement right there got his fans thinking, what if Kendrick isn't the innocent boy you've seen in the street with a basketball and some now a later to eat? Another line noted from Kendrick Lamar is, so why did I weep when Trayvon Martin was in the street when gang banging made me kill a blacker than me? The next line, as if it's not hitting you in the head enough, as a kid, I killed two adults. I'm too advanced. Now Kendrick said that all of his lyrics are from his actual experiences in his real life. Here's a quote from Kendrick Lamar. I've been through a lot. I've seen a lot. Where I come from, I've done a lot to tear down my own community. So the question is, what exactly has Kendrick done to tear down his own community? As soon as you allow yourself to even consider the theoretical scenario that Kendrick has actually killed another man, your brain actually starts to glitch. That is all with DEFCON number three. Let's take a look at what's on DEFCON number two. Drake OVO money laundering. Now I wanted to emphasize that this is purely a theory. I found this a little suspicious personally and I didn't seem to find many posts online for people having the same thoughts but the clothing series began with a collaboration between Roots Canada and OVO which produced several jackets, parkas and other collaborations. Since then OVO turned into a actual clothing line releasing a slew of clothes during every season. So t-shirts, sweatshirts, a variety of jackets, baseball hats and knit beanies are seasonal installations. If you went into one of these shops you would notice a gorgeous aesthetic, many employees and even even sometimes some security guards. But something you may also notice is a lack of inventory within the store. Compared to other clothing stores, there's about like three to five percent of the total inventory inside OVO. There aren't many t-shirts, there aren't many jackets, and there aren't many hoodies. It almost looks like if you sold everything inside the store, you would barely have enough money to cover the rent. And rent is something that I actually wanted to bring up because out of the 11 stores that OVO has, I've been to two of them. The first one in Square One Shopping Center in Mississauga, where I grew up, and 
again in the Eden Center in Toronto. I think it's safe to say that the rent at these locations every single month would be in the double digit thousands. So doesn't it sound a little bit strange to you when you hear that if they sold everything inside the store and they have enough money to cover just the rent, if they even have enough money to cover that. Now, my theory is that I think there's probably some dirty money rolling in and they're probably trying to make it look like a clean, legitimate business. I don't know. Now, money laundering is like making large amounts of money obtained from like most notably drug trafficking and they make it look like income from a legitimate source. Money laundering is considered a crime in many jurisdictions. It is a key procedure of nearly every organized crime. Well, my theory is that Drake probably uses his money from the rap music to fund a drug trafficking empire in the city of Toronto. Again, I wanted to clarify that this is purely a theory and he has never been alleged for doing this. I just put on my tinfoil condom and I found this a little bit fishy. So Drake, please don't send any goons at my head, bro. Next thing I want to talk to you about is the third eye. The third eye is one of the seven chakras. This third eye provides perception beyond ordinary sight. The third eye is a mystical concept of a speculative invisible eye, usually depicted as located on the forehead, which provides perception beyond ordinary sight. In Indian spiritual traditions, the third eye refers to the Ajna Chakra. The third eye allows the ability for clear thought, spiritual reflection, and self-reflection. It is the most elevated chakra in the physical body, allowing it to provide unlimited perspectives. The third eye also helps determine someone's reality and their beliefs based on what that person chooses to see in the world. Unless you have karma on your side, you are highly unlikely to be able to activate your third eye in a hurry. Activating the third eye brings out great power or possibly great pain if you are somehow caught unprepared. If your body or mind is unprepared for this rise, it can only become a disaster. Imagine sending a million watts of power through a 60 watt light bulb. Your mind must be completely clean before the awakening happens. You know, like assume your third eye is activated and suddenly you have tremendous power. Now the question is, what are you going to even do with that power? There have been many people who have spiritually perished because their minds were insufficiently clean. If chakra activations are done correctly and naturally, it is absolutely beautiful and strongly recommended. Now the next thing I want to talk about is big pharma mumble rap. As a central theme in rap music, drugs are far from new. Instead of talking about how modern rappers are worse influencers than old rappers, why not acknowledge the real problem which is how accessible drugs are? Everyone knows that drug abuse is an epidemic level issue, yet no one seems to look at the pharmaceutical companies behind them. The theory states that the big pharma companies are paying major record labels to force their artists to revolve their potential hit songs around the use of drugs. It appears like these companies have been pulling the strings for the main subject matter for music for nearly a decade now. There's really not that much evidence other than the speculation about how often that drugs are referenced in rap music and how profitable the big pharma companies have been, especially from a younger demographic. I just wanted to make a statement saying that rappers are not the issue of drug use, especially when linked to actual mental health. Instead, they reflect the culture succeeding in life because they are like, you know, incredibly relatable to some people. The next thing I wanted to talk to you about is DMT beings. Shamans have used psychedelic compounds throughout human history to enter spiritual domains and communicate with supernatural entities, ancestral beings, and powerful deities. Among these are the incredibly constant appearances of entities reported to be seen during DMT trips and tend to resemble each other with incredible similarity. Online forums and academic literature are filled with reports of mechanical elves, large praying mantises, and alien life forms appearing before DMT users. The psychedelic drug DMT can invoke powerful visions. In low doses, people often hallucinate fractal patterns, geometric shapes, and distortions in the physical space around them. But things get much, much stranger in higher doses. When people consume enough DMT to have what they call a breakthrough experience, they often describe an encounter of unknown beings that seem independent and existing in a reality that's separate from our own. Of course, the form and the nature of all these DMT elves vary in all these different reports, but still, one thing remains purely constant. People tend to rank these encounters amongst the most meaningful experiences of their lives, but for some people, these encounters could change their beliefs about reality, the existence of an afterlife or even the presence of an actual god. The next thing I want to talk to you about is How To Basic. This channel intentionally misleads first time viewers to believe that it is a how to tutorial channel. The videos try to convince us with their titles, their thumbnails, and their video descriptions. The channel claims that its videos are tutorials on many different subjects, usually emphasizing around cooking, but the actual content of the video shows the unidentified man interacting in point of view with the food and objects in many ways, mostly by throwing and destroying and creating a large mess around them. In addition, some videos
Lopez have employed additional gags with guest actors and unreleased footage appearing. On March 24th, 2018, How To Basic released what appeared to be a face reveal video. However, the video turned out to be a parody and a compilation of very popular YouTubers claiming themselves to be the channel's creator, ultimately continuing the legitimate creator's anonymity. Over 80 individuals had a cameo in the video, including those you see on the screen right now. Even until this very day, no one knows who the real person behind How To Basic is, and the mystery still hasn't been solved. I don't think it ever will be. The next thing I want to talk to you about is John Cena's Instagram. The famous pro wrestler has switched careers and become a successful Hollywood actor in the recent years. However, John Cena's Instagram is a weird and absurd meme paradise. If he wasn't verified, everyone would think that this Instagram profile had just been hacked or it's just a fake account. However, from his earliest post in 2013 until today, John Cena's Instagram account has been constantly posting random images that have found a unique niche. Now, he's written a caption that explains everything in his Instagram bio and it says, Welcome to my Instagram. These images will be posted without explanation for your interpretation. Enjoy! Sometimes they're absolutely random images and other times they're insanely cryptic. There's definitely a lot more behind the actual meanings of these posts and maybe John is actually trying to tell us something. The next thing I want to talk to you about is unlisted YouTube videos. So we already talked about the unsearchable YouTube videos. Now I want to talk to you about unlisted or private YouTube videos. Now think of the 37 million YouTube channels and what they could possibly have on unlisted or private. I myself, I personally have 11 unlisted videos to put it into context. It drives me absolutely crazy thinking that there's people deliberately hiding content from the public eye only for them to be seen privately. By the way, I just wanted to note that some people actually use YouTube as an unlimited cloud storage platform for their home videos. Like they would upload the videos they want to see at a later date and they would mark them as unlisted or private. So again, think of the 37 million YouTube channels and the 500 hours of content uploaded every minute. Then I want you to think about all the videos that they could possibly have on private. The last topic I wanted to talk to you about on DEF CON 2 is Five Nights at Freddy's. The main theory of the game, Five Nights at Freddy's, revolves around who William Afton was and what happened to him and the mystery behind the crying child. The game's full story is told through all of their mini games. We learn that an unnamed boy is bullied because of his irrational fear of a restaurant with a yellow animatronic bear named Fred Bear and a rabbit named Spring Bonnie. The FNAF rabbit hole is actually a really interesting rabbit hole that I actually recommend some of you guys looking into at one point of your life, but it tells a really interesting story and I think that all the mysteries surrounding the game in general have still not been solved. So. It's still open for interpretation. It's never been confirmed by the actual creators. I'm telling you, go take a look into the Five Nights at Freddy's lore. Now that's all the topics that's on DEFCON number two. Let's go ahead and move down and take a look at what's on DEFCON one. The first topic we're gonna talk about on DEFCON number one is Kanye Quest 3030. Now Kanye Quest 3030 is a hip hop themed science fiction role playing video game released in 2013 for the PC by an unknown developer. The game starts off with Kanye West taking the trash out. Then he weirdly finds himself traveling through a wormhole emerging on the other side and finding himself in the year 3030. In a frightening dystopian city filled with clones of famous hip hop musicians at the time and under control of a godly dictator, can Kanye get back home? Unfortunately, the ending of Kanye Quest 3030 is nothing close to spectacular. Kanye and his fans battle against the dreaded base god clone and eventually defeat him, granting Kanye the ability to return to the modern day and finally live happily ever after. However, in 2015, it was discovered by an anonymous user that there was actually more than one ending to the game. The user claimed to have discovered the Ascend secret in a cryptic text field the player can actually locate near the beginning of the game. Upon entering the code Ascend, the player is then exited to another level. The character actually no longer resembles Kanye West, but instead a butterfly. You, the newborn butterfly, find yourself contained within a pyramid with nothing but pop-up boxes that prompt you to enter a text. This discovery from this user actually started one of the greatest mysteries yet to be solved within the video game industry. Now, what is the true purpose of this and why does it exist in the first place? I want you to let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. The next topic I want to talk to you about. Now it's a little sensitive, but it's about the Overton Bridge. The Overton Bridge is an absolutely messed up bridge. Local researchers estimated that at least 450 dogs have jumped off this bridge. So all in all, about 50 dogs have actually passed away from these unexplained jumps from the bridge. But this mysterious and sad phenomenon has actually earned this bridge the nickname, the dogs bridge. First, the dogs would walk over to the bridge and then they would mysteriously leap off. Then according to some sources, if the dogs would make it, they would try to get to the top again, only to try and jump off again. The history behind the Overton Bridge is absolutely mysterious and frightening and I'm never ever letting Stormy near there. Now the next topic I want to talk to you about is the Bogdanoff Affair. The Bogdanoff Affair was an academic dispute regarding the legitimacy of a series of theoretical physics papers written by French twins Igor and Grichka Bogdanoff. The papers were actually published in reputable scientific journals and were alleged by their authors to culminate a theory for describing what actually occurred before and at the Big Bang. Basically, these two brothers over here, the Bogdanoff brothers, they don't necessarily agree with what everybody agrees with 
when we think of the Big Bang Theory. But like I stated, they actually made their own little claim of what happened during the Big Bang and after the Big Bang. However, in 2002, a controversy began with an allegation that the twins were just popular celebrities in France for hosting science-themed TV shows and had obtained PhDs with nonsensical work. In addition, rumors spread on various news groups that their work was just a deliberate hoax intended to target the weaknesses in the physics journal's review system to select papers for publication. And at the same time, the Bogdanov brothers continued to defend their legitimacy of their work. The next topic I wanted to talk to you about is last year's rabbit hole. Now, a lot of people are leaving comments on that rabbit hole video saying, Crypto, what's going on here? What's up with all the hidden messages within this video? What's up with all the stuff changing in the background? I gotta tell you right now, just so I can make the statement right now, and I gotta say that there's no hidden messages within that video. Stop asking me if there's any hidden messages within that video. There are no hidden messages within that video. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna say it one more time. In last year's rabbit hole, there are no hidden messages within this video. The next topic I want to talk to you about is the Mandela effect. You've heard of this one. Now, multiple people can often share false memories. To our society, we call this the Mandela effect. It refers to a situation and many people can believe that an event actually occurred when it happened a little bit differently than they remembered. The phenomenon was called the Mandela effect by many people online having vivid and detailed memories of news coverage of the South African leader Nelson Mandela dying in prison in the early 1980s. When in reality, Nelson Mandela actually passed away in December 2013. That, that, that's where it gets a little bit bizarre. That's where people started realizing the Mandela effect. But some famous examples of the Mandela effect other than Nelson Mandela himself are people wondering if the Monopoly guy had a monocle or not, Curious George having a tail or not, or the one that drives everybody crazy, whether the characters were called the Berenstein Bears or the Berenstain Bears. Now people think that this happens because our universe is interfering with other universes within the multiverse. And you know, speaking of the multiverse, uh, the next topic we're gonna be talking about is the multiverse. Now put simply, the multiverse is a hypothetical group of multiple universes. Together, these universes comprise everything that exists, which is the entirety of space, time, matter, energy, information, and all the physical laws that describe them. When you think about the multiverse, you have to actually think about the fact that there are possibilities to absolutely everything you can think of. For example, right now I'm gonna ask you to close your right eye. Go ahead, close your right eye. Good. Now, in some parallel universe, instead of asking you to close your right eye, the person in this video could have asked you to close your left eye or raise your right hand or absolutely do anything else. Or there's probably a parallel universe where I didn't ask you to do that in the first place. But still, you're currently in the universe where I asked you to close your right eye. Now, this theory could apply to absolutely everything you can think of. The route you take to work, to the bathroom, or to the shop to buy some snacks could have endless possibilities in the multiverse, stating that there are infinite universes with infinite outcomes. Now, I want you to think of a world where you USA didn't bomb Hiroshima, think of a world where the plane didn't crash into the towers. And now think of a world where Dwayne The Rock Johnson became the president. I mean, in some parallel universe, theoretically, absolutely all these things could be true. The next topic I want to talk to you about hits a little close home for me, but it's about the Toronto Protocol. This short and controversial text was leaked in Canada in 1995. It is reported to be the plan of a global elite group to manipulate the general public and governments across the world to bring together their long-term goal of a one-world government. This document covers many controversial areas Areas, including our food supply, where it is and what's gonna happen to it, the end goal of pollution, weapons that can actually cause earthquakes, the general media, and the global climate. In this document, it actually discusses the Toronto Protocol's earliest plans to create an integrated network of computers, call it the internet, and have it funded by entertainment and humanitarian aid to control the population with mass distractions and debauchery. Now, could everything in the Toronto Protocol be for real? Have you ever heard of the Toronto Protocol? I want you guys to let me know in the comment section down below. All right, that's all we with DEFCON number one. Let's get down to the bottom layer of the conspiracy rabbit hole. DEFCON X. The first topic that we're gonna be talking about on DEFCON X is Stanley Kubrick. Now, Stanley Kubrick is one of the greatest directors of all time. He worked really hard and he obsessed over every detail in every frame in all the movies he's ever made. The rabbit hole behind Stanley Kubrick and the secret messages that he left in his movies are still being studied today. The movie that I wanted to talk about specifically is his movie, Eyes Wide Shut, which was Kubrick's last film before he passed away in 1999. In this movie, we see Tom Cruise's character joining a sexual cult and doing absurd demonic rituals. Now, this movie is very, very weird. The worst part about this movie is that when Stanley Kubrick showed the movie to the film studios, the people in suits were not so happy about the messages that Kubrick was trying to share with us. Now, apparently there was an argument between Stanley Kubrick and another very powerful person from the studios, and it led to Stanley Kubrick storming out of the office and dying from a so-called heart attack later that night. The argument between the two was allegedly about a couple of scenes in the movie that exposed 
way too much than it should. It allegedly shows things about the very powerful elite people that the general public is not meant to see. The person that Stanley Kubrick was actually arguing with was screaming at him to remove a certain 23 minutes from the film. Now Kubrick didn't want to remove this part of the film because it was his film and he had 100% creative control. But as you can guess, a few months later when the movie finally came out, the studios actually took out the 23 minutes from the Eyes Wide Shut film. Every actor that was a part of the film had to sign a very lengthy non-disclosure agreement to not reveal what was inside that 23 minutes. It's a pretty messed up story and if you want to know more about it then check out this video from this person over here. Now what do you think happened in the 23 minutes removed from the film? On a side note, if you have already heard about this or you're not interested in this theory, if you want to look into my favorite Stanley Kubrick rabbit hole then look into the hidden messages that he left in his infamous adaptation of Stephen King's book The Shining. I love that movie. The next topic I want to talk to you about on DEFCON X is the Great Pyramid of Giza. For many people, the pyramids located in the Giza Plateau, specifically the Great Pyramid of Giza, are shrouded in complete mystery. Not only because of their enormous size, but also because we have no idea how the ancient Egyptians built the pyramids to this day. The weird part is that the Great Pyramid of Giza encodes many numerical coincidences. Amongst the most fascinating, is it just an eerie coincidence that the speed of light is the exact same digits as the coordinates of the Great Pyramid of Giza? Some say that this is just one of the many coincidences regarding numbers embedded within the Great Pyramid. While a fascinating connection, it's noteworthy to mention that a meter is a modern unit, and ancient Egyptians aren't known to use meters or seconds or for that matter, counting in decimals. Instead, ancient Egyptians used cubits as their measurement system. Now what do you think? Is this another coincidence or is it possible that somehow the ancient Egyptians knew about the idea of the speed of light or even the idea of a vacuum? The next topic I want to talk to you about is Astro World 2021. On November 5th, 2021, a fatal crowd crush occurred during the first night of the 2021 Astro World Festival, which was a music event by the American rapper Travis Scott held at NRG Park in Houston, Texas. Eight people passed away on the night of the show and two more died at the hospital over the following days. The cause of death for all 10 people was ruled to be because of an unexpected compressive asphyxiation. After the show, 25 people were hospitalized and more than 300 people were treated for injuries at the festival's field hospital. Now, multiple concert goers recorded the incident, posting videos and reciting their incidents on social media. The anticipation of the festival had been escalating for months. In addition, tickets sold out for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. In addition to that addition, past Astro World festivals had a history of very tough crowds to control. Now, the Houston police chief was so concerned about the crowd control at the Astro World festival that he went to Travis Scott's trailer to warn him about the energy in the crowd. After the news broke out, online conspiracy theorists theorized about the tragic deaths, which they believed were blood sacrifices carried out by Travis Scott as a part of a mass satanic ritual. The theories have gained traction in already established conspiratorial communities online. One feature noticed by most conspiracy theorists is the entrance to the festival, which was a giant model of Travis Scott's head with the entryway through an open mouth. Now, some compare the gaping mouth to Bosch's famous painting called The Christ in Limbo, which depicts the actual gates of hell. The next topic I want to talk to you about is the back rooms. There is a big yellow office building that you can get into by no clipping in real life. No clipping refers to what happens in gaming when the user passes through normally solid objects and typically leads the player to under the game's map. But instead of thinking about this in a video game, think about this in real life. Fortunately, this realm is out of the boundaries of the real world and like I said earlier, it can only be accessed by no clipping through a floor or a wall in a place that inspires deja vu or an uncomfortable feeling of nostalgia. When you end up in the back rooms, you'll find a never-ending maze of empty yellow rooms with beige carpets and old wallpaper. The mildew smell is constant due to the moldy carpets and there is a constant buzz from the fluorescent lighting. Now God save you if you hear something wandering around the back rooms because that creature probably already knows you're there at that point. But if you're still confused, the back rooms are basically a series of liminal spaces with nearly no human interactions. As you're inside the back rooms, it feels like a completely endless space and the back room consists of 11 stable levels and approximately 12 billion unstable levels. So like I said, be careful because you might no clip out of reality right now and good luck getting yourself out of the back rooms. The next topic I want to talk to you about is the New World Order. The New World Order is a popular conspiracy involving the rich and powerful people plotting mass population reduction and a one world government. Therefore, many influential historical and contemporary figures have been alleged to be a part of a conspiracy that works through many large organizations to orchestrate significant political and financial events as steps in an ongoing plot to achieve world domination. There's nothing else really to say about this theory other than what's already out there. I mean, I personally put this theory onto the list because of how deep the rabbit hole goes. Nobody really knows who the leader of the NWO is, which is everybody's question, and nobody knows everything that they've already influenced upon us. In the comment section, list a 
celebrity or a public figure that you think is a part of the NWO or the Illuminati. The next topic on DEF CON X is the simulation theory. Now, what if we are living in a simulation? The simulation theory is a theory or a belief that our reality is actually a simulation to the degree that it is unnoticeable from true reality and where the inhabitants of the simulation are unaware that they're actually in a simulation in the first place. Many people believe that the nature of our existence is just an artificial simulation, just like a computer simulation. Now, the theory started because our technology is advancing really, really, really quickly. And according to Moore's law, computer speed and memory capacity doubles every 18 months. So if computers continue to obey Moore's law, they will eventually surpass our human intelligence within the next hundred years. So some people started thinking, what if something greater than us had powerful computers and just ran some simulations for whatever reason resulting in our existence? Now, if this were true, then there would mean that there's an insanely strong possibility that an unknown number of universes are running simultaneously along ours. But if this is false, then that would mean we live in the base reality and would be able to conduct the simulations ourselves eventually. Now, the last topic I want to talk to you about on DEF CON X, the pandemic. Now, this is still very recent, so I'm not going to be irresponsible and say whether I believe these theories or not. All I'm going to do is lay out what people believe and leave my own personal bias out of this. So if you can comprehend what happened in this video and you made it till this point, then I don't even have to explain what this is in relation to. We all know what happened and we should take a look at these stats as of today to understand what this virus actually caused in our world. First, an infected bat transmitted its disease to a human, from what we're told, and then this person started spreading it to other people, finally making its way to virtually every corner of the world. Now again, that's what the World Health Organization told us. The two main conspiracy theories behind what really led to the leak of the virus include global population control from the New World Order or biological warfare from one country to another. Now, as I said, I'm not going to be irresponsible, so I'll only provide one example for each theory and pick the most prominent one for each. As I indicated earlier in the video, the New World Order allegedly had plans for population control. The theory states that the global elites secretly manufactured the virus to fulfill their goal of population control and world domination. As for the biological weapon theory, people believe that China or Russia could be behind the creation and leak of the virus that led to the pandemic. Because of this virus, many people have really been affected and I'm only here to show the theory at face value, not to make anyone truly believe them. But unfortunately, like I said, many people have lost somebody very, very, very important to them. They just wanted to know if they're being lied to about something so freaking serious. So if you're one of those people, then I suggest looking into these two theories. Now, as you can see, there's a bunch of other topics in the bottom layer, bottom, bottom, bottom layer. And this layer, I'm going to call it DEF CON question mark. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit everything into this video. So if you guys want to see me make a video with all this stuff in DEF CON question mark, then let me know in the comment section down below. I couldn't even find that much information on some of these topics, but the other half, I did find a lot of information. So like I said, just let me know in the comment section if you guys want to see it. Anyways, see you guys soon.